Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by a nucleotide. You should then be able to describe the general structure of the nucleotides found in DNA and RNA. And finally, you should be able to describe how nucleotides can be joined by a condensation reaction. Now you'll already have looked at DNA in your GCSEs, and you may have seen that DNA is built from molecules called nucleotides. So what exactly is a nucleotide? Well, I'm showing you here the structure of a nucleotide that we find in DNA. Now, I know that this looks complicated, but you don't need to learn this structure. Nucleotides consist of three parts, and you do need to be able to name these. In the centre, we have a five carbon sugar molecule. Sugars with five carbon atoms are called pentose sugars. Here's carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, and carbon five. Attached to the sugar, we find a nitrogen containing molecule called a base. Sometimes these are referred to as nitrogenous bases as they contain nitrogen, and we're going to be looking at bases in more detail later. Attached to the other side of the sugar molecule, we find a negatively charged phosphate group. So that means that nucleotides contain the elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Now, rather than draw all of the different atoms in a nucleotide, we can represent them in a simpler form, which I'm showing you here. I should point out that you definitely need to learn this diagram. Now, nucleotides are used to make both the molecules DNA and RNA, and the nucleotides that we find in DNA and in RNA all share the same general structure, but there are specific differences. In DNA, the pentose sugar is called deoxyribose, whereas in RNA, the pentose sugar is called ribose. As you can see, deoxyribose has one fewer oxygen atoms than ribose. In DNA nucleotides, we find four different bases. These are called adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And again, you don't need to learn the structures of these bases. Now, if you look carefully at the bases, you'll see that two of them have a double ring structure. These are adenine and guanine. Scientists call these bases purines. The other two bases, thymine and cytosine, have a single ring structure. And scientists call these bases pyrimidines. Now, just like DNA, RNA also contains the bases adenine, guanine, and cytosine. However, RNA does not contain the base thymine. Instead, RNA contains the base uracil, and it's really important that you learn that. Coming up, we'll look at how we form a polynucleotide. Okay, I'm showing you here the general structure of a nucleotide. You'll see that I'm showing you the hydroxyl group on carbon-3 of the pentose sugar. And that's because it plays a really important role, which we're going to look at now. OK, now if I take two nucleotides like this, then we can form a bond between the phosphate group of one nucleotide and the hydroxyl group on carbon-3 of the pentose sugar of the other nucleotide. And I'm showing that bond here. The bond between two nucleotides is called a phosphodiester bond, and it's really important that you learn that name. Now, when the phosphodiester bond forms, water is released. So this is an example of a condensation reaction, and the molecule we formed is called a dinucleotide. Now we can break the phosphodiester bond by adding back water, and as we've seen before, this is called a hydrolysis reaction. OK, now we can continue to add nucleotides by forming phosphodiester bonds, and I'm showing you that here. We've formed a polymer of nucleotides, and scientists call this a polynucleotide. Both DNA and RNA are examples of polynucleotides. In the next video, we'll take a closer look at the structures of both DNA and RNA.